Good morning all. So um, I thought I would make a video on um, trade management, uh, I guess some trade psychology during, um, I guess, a risk off environment. And, uh, you know, we are in a risk off um, environment at the moment, today being uh, the 24th of uh, February 2022. Uh, Putin orders Russia attacks across a Ukraine dark day. So Russian leader says US crossed the line with NATO expansion. Biden says Western allies will impose severe sanctions. So what does that you know mean in um, in currency land, right? And um, one of the things, I guess, if you haven't heard me say this before because you're new to the you know to the to the Discord uh, mentoring group, um, or even if you are have been here uh, for a while and maybe forgotten certain things. It's always best to have, a, I guess, a refresher as well. So um, for those of you who haven't been um, in the group uh, that long that have joined recently, uh, this is going to be obviously your first time when it comes to really kind of trading and understanding, you know, maybe risk on risk off concepts and how to really kind of, uh, I guess, trade and manage your trading um, during an environment like this. Now, the first thing to uh, really understand and accept is that nobody knows um, what is going to happen, right? No one knows what is going to happen, um, you know, uh, minute to minute, you know, hour to hour. So um, just understand that you have to be, um, you have to understand and embrace almost the uncertainty of it, right? Uncertainty, and when I say embrace uncertainty, I mean just understand that don't try to know and try to figure out what is going to happen. We, we deal with probabilities and possibilities in um, in, in trading and and, um, and so we have to just understand that there's a possibility and a likelihood of something happening over another and whether we want to trade in that environment because not trading is a choice as well yeah it doesn't mean that we must trade in every single environment there is a time where we can sit on our hands and we should sit on our hands if things are very uncertain but when it comes to trade management, um, and really our trading psychology. One of the things um, that we should really be uh, aware of is understanding that um, our position size management in maybe an uncertain environment such as what we're dealing with right now, yeah? And as a rule of thumb, I guess, um, our risk positions or my risk position um, is based on um, basically my a 10 trade losing streak if I was to have a 10 trade losing streak and I have right for uh, for what it's worth I have I think the the, the longest losing streak I had was um, 15 uh, many of you know it wasn't necessarily on you know 15 different currency pairs it was when I was being uh, uh, many years ago when I was being silly placing you know pending orders on you know eight nine ten different pairs and um and uh, doing uh, silly things that i shouldn't have been doing back in you know when i was first started trading right and i lost uh, 15 trades in a row um but anyways the point is is that a 10 trade losing streak can happen now if you do have a 10 trade losing streak yeah if you did have a 10 trade losing streak right what would be the maximum risk on your account that you would be willing to accept meaning that if you had a 10 trade losing streak uh, and you risk one percent on a trade, yeah. Are you willing? Are you willing, yeah, uh, to accept uh, a ten percent uh, drawdown on your account? Yeah, ten percent drawdown on your account. If yes, then that's fine, right? Then, 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 uh, you know, you risk one percent uh, on a trade. Yeah. Some people are not. Me, I'm more risk averse. Um, so personally, uh, if I have a 10 trade losing streak, yeah, I generally will risk somewhere between zero, actually 0 0.5 to 0.3 percent, yeah, 3 uh, percent on trades depending on the environment, yeah. So the most I will lose on a 10 trade losing streak, it doesn't happen very often, quite rare, but you know, um, when it, if it does happen, when it does happen, um, then you know, the most I will lose on a drawdown, yeah, if things always, you know, keep going against me, is is 5% is the maximum, right? Is, 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 is what I'm prepared to lose on a 10 trade losing streak. Can I use 11, 12, 13, 15, etc.? Yes, of course we can. Um, it's, it's highly unlikely, although it is possible, but that is really the mindset that you have to, um, you know, 
uh, have because this is possible. A 15 trade losing streak is possible. A 20 trade losing streak is possible. Nothing is impossible in this world, right? Um, so base your position size on an extreme, yeah? And then the, the, whatever that extreme is, whether it's 10, whether it's 20, whatever it is you think is the extreme, use maybe 10 as a, as a baseline, then divide that up into per trade. And if you're comfortable with that, that should be your uh, your trade. As a caveat to that though, while you're learning to trade, while you're learning a, a, a technical strategy, a fundamental strategy, a methodology, I really advise the lowest amount um, of risk that you should take. You know, if you can take 0.1% on a trade, uh, per trade, then that should be it, that should be it. Right, I guess, and I understand that not, not everyone can risk 0.1% on a trade because they have smaller accounts. I definitely understand that, but it should be the smallest risk percentage that you can possibly um, risk per uh, per position size. So um, that should be really where your mindset is. And once you've figured that out, um, the next really step not necessarily in order, but one of the things you should think about is knowing when to risk less than normal per trade. And again, I, and I say again, but those of you who know uh, me and the way that I trade and I've made videos on this is that I have more of a risk on bias, right? A risk on bias, meaning I believe that um, that human beings have uh, problem solvers, right? And eventually we solve problems. The, 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 uh, the Russia-Ukraine um, uh, war uh, escalations tensions will be resolved right nobody wants to live in perpetual war we generally want peace it's, it's, war is not good for the economy um and it's just not good for for, for lives etc so from that perspective there's always a a need and a want um to want for for a resolution right so from that perspective in a risk on in a in a, in, in a risk off environment yes you know, uh, money will tend to flow into safe haven assets, for example, or safe haven currencies, I should say, um, like, for example, the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. Now, you, you know, you guys know that I'm, you know, a buyer of, for example, the commodity currencies, you know, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, um, uh, and the New Zealand dollar, more, more recently, the, the Australian dollar, uh, I think, um, uh, should should wanna um, is 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 a bit undervalued again. We have to kind of wait for the data to support that narrative, right? And against the, for example, the the yen and the Swiss franc. Now, in a risk-off environment, you should have price. I mean, the uh, uh, the uh, the yen and the Swiss franc are the safe haven currencies that will generally tend to strengthen. But if you understand, you know, fundamentals. Um, uh, uh, I guess more more risk on sentiment and you know, fundamental analysis when it comes to monetary policy, inflation, interest rates, etc. Um, uh, generally should um, should prevail in the long term. Risk of sentiment um, can last for a while. It can last for a short time, again, because of the need for humans to want to come to a resolution and just generally have, you know, peace. So from that perspective, risk, if you're trading, for example, you know, the CAD, yeah, trading the CAD yen, and my bias would be to the long side, right? Now, in a risk-off environment, you would probably see prices do something like this. Yeah, in a risk-off environment where the yen is getting stronger than the CAD because money is flowing into the Japanese yen. Um, in, a, in an environment like that, I will still be long because I'm not looking at... Um, uh, uh, the, the taking advantage of the risk-off sentiment. I'm understanding that risk sentiment yeah can push prices to where to, to bargain prices that when risk on comes back i have a lot more upside and a lot more risk reward yeah but getting back to i guess knowing when to risk less than normal this is an environment where i will risk less than normal if i understand that there's a possibility of risk um you know risk off sentiment coming into the market or we are in a risk off environment then why would i you know risk uh, 0. you know 5% uh, on 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 trades right it doesn't make any sense lower the risk sentiment you know 0. 0.3 even 0. 0.2 right percent in an environment and when things start to come back to more risk off i say risk on um, and there is more of a resolution yeah then i can increase my position size 
and go back to normal. So that's all part of risk management. So again, reducing position size, yeah, and the number of positions. So as you you know, um, you guys should know, um, is that I generally will risk uh, at least uh, three positions uh, on each uh, trade, one market order and uh, two pending orders, sometimes three pending orders if I'm very, very bullish on a currency pair. Um, but generally, I will risk uh, three positions. Now, what you can do if you, if you risk three positions as well, uh, what you can do is actually just risk two positions, right? So not only reduce your position size, but but have maybe one market order and one pending order rather than two pending orders. Um, or just risk one position and that could be either a market order or a, or a pullback pending order, right? But these are the things that you need to consider in an environment where um, you know the market is uncertain. And of course, you can just sit out until things do get back to normal. And another thing as well, is looking uh, is, is to shift your focus to maybe higher time frame setups and the reason why this is is because on a lower time frame it's very hard to you know to, to understand which level I mean with, with us we're looking at obviously daily uh, supply and demand zones right we should be but when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, the amount of supply you want to see or the amount of demand you want to see in a candlestick, yeah? So for example, let me just bring uh, this out, right? So let's say for example, that's your candlestick right there, yeah? And let's say for example, this is, this is a candlestick you wanna get involved in. Now, if this is a one hour time frame, yeah? It's very difficult to understand that prices, you know, coming down to a level, whether that one hour, you know, pin bar or whatever the uh, candlestick is, doji that you wanna, you know, uh, look to trade, is enough of a signal in an environment like this uh, that is gonna signal really a, um, a reversal, because this could just be profit taking. Right. This could just be profit taking as prices continue to go down. Yeah. But if you're looking at that as maybe a daily time frame chart or a 12 hour or an eight hour, for example, you have actually eight hours worth of demand. Yeah. Rather than one hour or 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, in, in that candlestick formation to then assess what has happened over that eight hours, then you can say, all right, then, well, um, within that eight hours, we did get some positive news. Within that day, we did get some positive news. Yeah, within 24 hours, we did get positive news on, <clears throat> you know, the the Russia Ukraine tensions, and then that will be enough confluence to um, and enough demand potentially uh, to want to enter into a trade. And again. Um, I know traders are going to say, well, the risk reward is, is, is skewed. I have to have, you know, more risk, more reward because that might represent, you know, a hundred pips, for example, rather than, um, maybe 20 pips, for example, on an hourly time frame chart when it comes to, you know, your entry and your, and your stop loss. But that's not really, you know, the point. You shouldn't really be thinking like that because if prices come down to a level where, um, where risk is, and as, as I said before, risk off sentiment pushes prices to bargain areas where we want to be buyers. If it's pushed price down enough, you should have enough upside potential, um, you know, to risk maybe, you know, 100. If you have an upside potential, maybe 300 pips, 400 pips, right, to the upside. So it's, you know, more about perspective. Plus as well, this should really represent still, um, you know, your zero point, you know, 3%, 0.2% if your account is big enough. Maybe if you can't risk that amount, maybe it has to be risk, you know, you have to risk 0.5% on that trade or 0.8%. But whatever the risk is, yeah, whatever the position is or the size of the trade, it should still risk, it should still be the uh, same amount of uh, risk percentage. Plus as well, you've got the added bonus of time, yeah? time to understand why this is maybe not just a profit taking candle yeah on the way you know uh, uh down or why actually within that time period we can see that and reading you know new sentiment that things have actually got uh, a bit better yeah within the past maybe day or so yep putin's announced that he's pulling troops back and rather than getting trying to you know um jump in on on an hourly time frame which is you know very um 
it, it, it doesn't carry the same weight that amount of demand in an hour does not carry the same weight as now the amount of demand that would you know take place over a day plus you've got the confluence of understanding um, you know the, 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 the news flows right and what is actually happening um, and uh, you know the, the resolution so from that perspective shift your focus to a, to higher time frame setups you know they're safer um yes you get less risk reward but at the end of the day it's not really about that it's about the protection of your capital and not basically death by a thousand cuts so um again should you trade in a risk of sentiment um is the question and um Again, I've mentioned this before, risk off sentiment can end at any time, yeah? At any moment, um, by, even by the time you watch this video, there could be headlines where, you know, uh, Russia have backed down and there is a resolution, right? Nobody knows, nobody can predict it. Yes, there is a likelihood of it probably continuing, but there is obviously the possibility that it could end. And um, just for, um, I guess, just this, uh, this screenshot, just to explain is, um, is I took a screenshot of it today. Uh, F Green uh, says that what happens next in Russia has finally, uh, what happens next as Russia has finally invaded Ukraine? What is going to be the long term effect on the markets? Will the risk of sentiments perpetually prevail? And he says he doesn't think so. And I have to, you know, agree, yeah, with this statement. And uh, I expect the market to eventually price in the war. It always does, right? It prices in everything. And gradually bounce back, as I was saying before, with uh, humans uh, um, and we are uh, our need for, for for peace and not perpetual war. And I know there are, you know, there's the military industrial complex, etc., and uh, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I do believe that um, peace is the way forward. And uh, so the war and gradually bounce back sometime soon, even if war rages on. Um, and he would be looking to buy the dips on the dollar, the CAD, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar versus the Swiss, um, the, the yen and the Swiss franc cross pairs. Absolutely, in my opinion. Um, and I totally agree, uh, F Green. And that's my position as well. And uh, again, we understand that nobody knows. No one's, I'm not trying to time. I'm trying to, we're not trying to tell everyone when the, the bottom is going to be in and when, um, you know, when the war is going to be over. That's, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's silly. But at the end of the day, um, risk off sentiment can end at any time remember that the market is an auction at all times there are buyers and sellers yeah there are buyers and sellers and if you don't recognize that the market is always an auction meaning that the market is never always going to go down in a straight line the market cannot go down in a straight line yeah even if the path for least resistance is to the downside you will have moments where you have fair value auctions for example and there is an opportunity to potentially you know buy at certain levels and then if 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 for example this is obviously you know price and this is time if for example during this time uh where we have you know a uh, fair value auction you know um uh, there is a resolution in 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 with the russia ukraine um uh, war then the buyers in this auction yeah, price auction. Uh, many of you may recognize it as a sideways moving market, a range, consolidation, etc. Um, if during that time, let's say, for example, that's today, and then this might be, for example, next week or next month, if during that time the war gets resolved, then it's going to look like an absolute bargain if we're trading, you know, these currency pairs like the dollar, the CAD, the Aussie dollar, and the New Zealand dollar against the uh, the yen and the Swiss franc, right? Um, because those are um, those are currencies that you really want to sell in in a uh, risk on environment or less risk off. So from that perspective, there's always going to be auctions. The market uh, is 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 not for speculation, right? Even though we speculate on the market, the market is um, um, an auction between uh, the market makers providing liquidity and um, and uh, I guess the financial institutions who want to buy and sell at prices and if you don't understand that then unfortunately you, you really are at disadvantage and if you understand that you'll understand that there will always be pullbacks due to liquidity hunting um and uh, li liquidity providers right so liquidity hunting and the market makers who provide liquidity to the financial institutions the market cannot just keep trading unfairly it doesn't happen like that right so there will be opportunities to buy um 
And so again, that coincides really with understanding um, uh, you know the, uh, the fact that you don't necessarily want to try to pick the bottom on lower time frames. Look for higher time frames. Maybe shift your focus to to the higher time frames. Look for the amount of demand that came in over a certain period of time, and also look for the reasons why. If 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 there's no change in in resentment, or it doesn't look like it, if things are escalating, and you do see, for example, a um, a, a, a bullish candle. Let's say, for example, you see a, 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 a prices have come down to an area and you see a really nice pin bar, right? Pin bar at a level of demand and you want to be a buyer at a CAD against, for example, the Swiss franc, yeah? Now, you're in an area of demand. Now, let's just say that candlestick there has um, has, has formed at the end of the day, but in the news wires, uh, things are getting, you know, worse and worse and worse and worse, right? Uh, the tensions are escalating, you know, death toll is going up, you know, there's uh, chemical warfare, who knows, just think of the worst things that could happen, you know, in, in, in war. Is that an air, is that, is that really, um, would that likely be profit taking from a move down or would that, is that likely to be a reversal? I mean, again, nobody knows, but the likelihood is that we could see more, you know, potential downside, right? Whereas if that, uh, candlestick happens and we see um, over you know the period of a day this is maybe a daily candle you know or a 12 hour candle and we've seen some positive news over the news wires that could then obviously more likely revert lead to a potential reversal right or a pause so there are things that we can do and if you look at you know what happened in I guess the worst crisis and the worst risk of sentiment in modern times, right? COVID nineteen. Go back to you know a chart twenty twenty. You know between February and probably April, you'll see um, you'll see a massive move to the downside as uh, you know the risk uh, safe haven currencies, the yen was strengthening against, for example, the the dollar, right? And you saw something like this happen over a certain period of time, but then. What happened is, is prices went to the upside because the market then shifted its focus on um, a global recovery, right? So global recovery meaning who is handling the um, uh, the COVID uh, crisis and lockdowns better than other currencies, right? And that was where money was going to flow. Risk off sentiment doesn't last um, forever. It shouldn't last forever. And even over a prolonged risk sentiment environment where we had the Trump, China Trump uh, trade war back in uh, 20, I think it was in 2018, 2019 now, 2019, um, we, we had a, even though, you know, prices for certain currencies, risk off currencies were strengthening, we still had pullbacks, yeah, in those and large pullbacks in that, um, in that sentiment. Um, and in that risk off environment, yeah, prices didn't go down forever, didn't keep going down, right? It doesn't happen. Um, and if it does happen, it won't happen for long. And if you understand the market mechanics and the way that uh, the market has to work as an auction, liquidity providers, liquidity hunting, um, you know, there are still opportunities in a risk off environment to go long, just as there are risk in, in a risk on environment, yeah, there are always pullbacks, right? When we see uh, the market um, in a risk on environment when everything is all good in the world and we see prices you know going higher there's always going to be pullbacks right there's always going to be pullbacks in a risk on environment so what makes you think that there's not going to be pullbacks in a risk off environment it makes n absolutely no sense and while you're in that trade let's say for example you pick that trade you might you know make a little bit you might not right you might make a lot who knows but at some point during this downtrend you could be in that trade and then while you're in that trade all of a sudden again a resolution is found between russia and ukraine and then that trade then becomes a massive runner right that can be a 10 20 30 40 to 1 type trade yeah so it's not necessarily what happens in the short term it's really you know how you handle things in the long term and understanding fundamentals and value. So, with that being said, um, I hope you found this uh, this this useful. And um, and take care, guys. And uh, speak to you all soon.